All right, guys. Now we have somebody from Hong Kong, James. Hello. Tell me a bit. Hello. How are you doing? Good. All right. Uh, tell me, you work for a Young Masters Brewery in Hong Kong. What's that about? So Young Master Brewery started in 2013. We are one of the. We're actually the first craft brewery in Hong Kong. And uh, throughout the years, we started brewing different beer styles. We started with IPAs and pale ales, but uh, in 2016, around, uh, we moved to a bigger brewery, and we also uh, brought in the first uh, uh, fooder we ordered from Belgium in Asia. So we are the first Asian brewery to have a fooder in our brewery. So we started brewing uh, uh, wild ales with the uh, fooder as well. We also do a lot of barrel aging program. And some of them are funky stuff. Some of them are imperial stuff. Uh, so yeah, we do a different, different brewery, uh, different beers. We also have uh, five different bar and restaurants in Hong Kong. So we actually uh, not only serve our own beers, but we bring in a lot of different beers from different countries and try to present different craft beers to the uh, Hong Kong people. Yeah. Tell me, James, was it difficult to find uh, a Belgium fooder to ship it to Hong Kong or how, how was that the networking? It wasn't too, it wasn't too difficult. It's just uh, not, no one has done before. So it, uh, there were a bit of explaining to do to the custom, but uh, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't too much of a trouble. Okay, cool, cool. And the the restaurants, you you noticed that you work in five different restaurants. What is the link with beer and craft beer, or how is that the going? So uh, the five bar and restaurants we have, they only serve craft beer. Mm -hmm. So, um, but when we say that, uh, it's sometimes like, oh, so what is craft beer and what is normal beer, right? Yeah. So at the end of the day, we just really source the uh, best beer we can find and uh, try to present different beer styles as well and of course with our own beers and also different beers from different countries we try to make sure the shipping and everything is uh, well uh, well done like cold chain and uh, not getting like oxidized beer or old beers just making sure the beers uh, when they are sold at our bars they're in their best shape um, yeah so that's what we do at all our bars but um, we also do different style of food among uh, the different restaurants. So we try to pair different food concepts together with craft beer and try to make people in Hong Kong understand that oh, when you drink beer, you actually can eat very, a lot of different food and it's very versatile. Yep. What are typical beer snacks in Hong Kong? I, I think now more on fish dishes and more Asian cuisine. Is that right? Or is it like the European style cheese and sausages? Uh, so... Definitely not. Uh, like, I mean, in Hong Kong, Western food is very popular. So, of course, like cheese and, and all other uh, Western snacks are still very popular for drinking beer. But we have a lot of very Asian and Chinese snacks for drinking beer as well. Like, um, like you said, uh, some uh, fish product related, like a dried, uh, dried fish, you can say, like, uh, like slices of dried fish or uh, some kind of... Um, uh, our, our shop has a very interesting croquette that's made with oysters, dried oysters uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, so that's like a cross between uh, Western food and uh, Asian food. And uh, edamame, uh, I think a lot of Western people also like, is a Japanese bean uh, that um, we, we, we stir fried one in one of our shops and that's a very popular beer snacks as well. So, yeah, I mean, we, we serve different kind of food. So we have Western food, we have Asian food as well. Yeah. And so, yeah, we got a lot of different snacks for drinking beer. In, in terms of uh, beer in the restaurant, you brew with your brewery um, for your own restaurants, of course. And in 2013, you started with a small brewery, but in 2017, the small brewery needed a bigger brewery. Uh, what are the mm. challenges you have as a brewer in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, the challenge is definitely space. Uh, it's very hard to find a ground level huge unit because in Hong Kong, you almost cannot imagine to have a whole whole brewery built in red bricks. It's so beautiful. Uh, in Hong Kong, it's uh, industrial buildings and um, uh, you, you get one floor. Uh, there are actually breweries that are on like nine floor or 10 floor, which is not even 
ground floor. But then the like the sewage and uh, water farming and everything would be like quite different, right? Uh, in Hong Kong, this is definitely the the issue, having a space issue. So actually, our first site, the small site, is actually uh, it's like ten, uh, fourth floor or something. Uh, and then our when we move to the bigger brewery, it's uh, become ground floor. So it's bigger space, but still there are a lot of structural uh, issue with the uh, industrial building. Like the uh, pipes are not up to par uh, originally. We gotta we gotta redo a lot of them and. Yeah, these are the challenges we have in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, you mentioned also beer styles in Hong Kong. I assume you guys know a lot about Belgian beers. What are your personal go-to Belgian beers? I mean, for me, since I was a kid, I was always a fan of Whole Garden already. <laughs> but that's just a go-to beer style. Uh, like when, when I'm not trying to use my brain and just want a Belgian beer, what would I get? So then... Uh, then a, a white ale that would be great, but for for me now especially uh, when I uh, want the Belgian beer like uh, and it's getting quite popular as well is all the wild sour ales. Uh, of of course a lot of lambics and a lot of goose. Uh, it's actually getting more and more popular. I realize in Hong Kong um, as uh, one of uh, Asian city we are one of the cities that really like drinking sour stuff. Uh, compared to other Asian countries and cities, we are not as a sweet drinker. Uh, when we go out to drink um, uh, different beverage, uh, we are often the ones that ask for less sweet and more sourness. Uh, in our cocktails as well, uh, when you drink cocktails in Hong Kong, you realize, oh, actually Hong Kong people prefer sour stuff than, than a lot of uh, really sweet stuff. Uh, that that shows a lot in beer as well and a lot of our customers uh, or, or fans who started drinking with us since 2013 now they're all like sour drinkers and they really like having different funky stuff and uh, interesting uh, yeast uh, uh, induced flavor and all these things yeah, yeah. you did already collapses with uh, breweries outside of hong kong we have yeah uh, young master itself has collapsed with for example, Finback from the US, uh, from the UK, uh, Northern Monk, uh, who else? Yeah, there's actually quite a lot of it. I just can't, just can't come to my head. Australia, we, I think we have collabed with Moondog, I think we have. Uh, in Japan, AJB, uh, in Taiwan, uh, Taihu. Uh, Oh, in Norway, we uh, collaborated with uh, Lerfik as well. And uh, yeah, so yeah, we, uh, Mikeller, we also had a really good relationship before. I don't remember if we released a collab beer. But yeah, we, we actually do a lot of uh, collab brews, uh, especially pre COVID. There was a lot of collaborations uh, between us and a brewery outside. But yeah, since COVID, there's actually way less chance. and. Now you're asking, like we're talking about having a collaboration with Belgian Brewery is actually like a, a great chance for us to get back on this. Uh, yeah. Tell me a bit, if you want to do a collapse with a Belgian brewer, what type of brewer or, or beer style would you do with him? What are you looking for? Because Belgium is very wide uh, in brewery. Yeah, right? yeah, definitely. I think for us, it's definitely something sour related. I don't want to say like, oh, I definitely want a Lambic Brewery or something like that, but I think something wild and sour, uh, it's uh, something we really look forward to if we collab. Uh, since, especially for us, we are the first Asian brewery to have a, a fooder and brew sour ales, we really uh, would be very happy if we can collab with uh, one of the Lambic brewers that we always look up to. Uh, but also some new craft breweries in Belgium as well. I realized uh, some of the Lambic brewers are more like traditional breweries right and then there are a lot of uh, new craft breweries as well like i don't know brussels beer project and and uh, uh a few others and uh yeah these uh we're all very happy to collaborate with if we have a chance yeah yeah we'll certainly see that if that comes out eh? um you want to do a quick mm -hmm. shout out to uh some people in europe or in uh in hong kong Oh wow! <laughs> uh, right now, there we have a lot of uh, 
Hong Kong people uh, recently moved to the UK, so I definitely want to say hi to every every um, uh, every of my friend who moved to the UK and every uh, brewers that I know uh, moved to the UK and working in some uh, breweries in the UK now. Um, other than that, I haven't seen a lot of our European friends for a long time. Like uh, like I said, I mentioned Lovig and uh, Northern Monk and also uh hot water uh forgot to mention uh i actually i mean i don't know if paul remembers but like paul paul was from hong kong so uh so yeah uh, we had a few times that we met each other and uh pre-covid we actually thought like a few from young master also thought about going to the uk and visit uh different breweries including car water and others and yeah so just another shout out to uh them and uh, yeah, um, I miss traveling and meeting all different breweries from the world. <laughs> yeah, we all, we all. Uh, all right, James, thanks a lot. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey.